What's up guys, I'm Dimitri the Hara Canucks. Today we're visiting ASUS. We got our name tags. I've decided to be D-Money, just for fun of it. And this looks like a bit of an, an IKEA set, to be honest, but uh, I hear there's a new case somewhere floating around. I think I've noticed it. But first, huge thanks to Thermaltech, Fantex, Be Quiet and Razer for sponsoring our CS visit. Shooby 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 dooby 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 So this, my friends, is what I want to check out today. The ROG Z11 in its final finished form. We saw the prototype being displayed at Computex a few months ago, but it's actually quite awesome to see it being finished. And it's kind of weird to see many awesome cases being released at CES, uh, whereas usually that's the case for Computex. But the Z11 is, and I'll just give you a quick rundown on the specs. It's a $249 case, so that's a little bit pricey. You're paying the ROG tax. It is the same price as the ROG Helios enclosure. And there's also a $299 uh, model of this that includes the OLED display in the front that you can connect to the ROG terminal that can display CPU temperature and whatever else you want to display. Similar things you see on ROG motherboard. So the $249 price point, what does that get you? It's a full aluminum enclosure, okay? So no steel, full aluminum. Uh, frame, aluminum paneling on the outside, and some plastic bits here and there. The one thing that this thing reminds me of, uh, outside of having like very ROG uh, complexity and dynamics in terms of the paneling and the little shapes here and there, is if you guys are into sci-fi and if you watched uh, The Expanse, that thing looks like the spaceship, the Rosinante, especially from the back with that beautiful aluminum thing. I don't know, this is something that I thought of when I uh, first saw the case from the rear. So the Z11, where does that come from? That is the actual angle in degrees for the motherboard. So they've patented this thing where the motherboard is not flat against uh, the motherboard tray as the motherboard tray is angled 11 degrees on the interior and that presumably actually has many benefits. We have additional spacing behind the motherboard tray for cables, uh, which is actually quite important when you're dealing with ITX form factor, even though this is a pretty large enclosure for ITX space, but that uh, 11 degree offset on the back of the tray gives you more space for cables. So that is one thing. The second thing is performance because having more area behind the CPU backplate means you have more cooling. The power supply is installed at the bottom, uh, supports full ATX units because I mean the case is pretty massive. The shroud is nicely angled. The cables do exit from both sides. Uh, we do also have a bottom intake 140 mm fan that is included and it's slightly below the power supply. So if you do have a really long unit, they will not interfere. I do appreciate that. So cooling wise, we have two more fans at the top. 140 mm fans are included, set in exhaust. And we also can install dual 120 mm fans for the rear. And this is most likely the perfect scenario where you install an all-in-one cooler with these uh, radiator uh, and fan installation set up to exhaust from the back. The GPU area is located to the front. Tempered glass is of course to reveal all that beautiful card. At first we were worried about performance because it is fairly close to the side panel, but we do have ventilation that is available on the top, on the side and at the bottom of the graphics card. Plus because of that angle, we do have additional spacing there. So I don't think GPU temperatures should be a problem. All the potential intake ports are dust filtered with a fine mesh that you can easily clean. As for storage, you can install dual SSDs instead of the radiator at the back. So there's a bit of a compromise there. We also have this little cable bracket below the motherboard that is to hide the cables onto which you can install an SSD. And you can also install one behind the motherboard tray. CPU towers up to 130 millimeters are supported. So you're most likely going to want to go with an AEO solution or actually build a custom loop, in which case you will be able to mount a 240 radiator up top. Uh, otherwise, you can't really mount an AO at the top because there's not much room width-wise. The ROG hub behind the motherboard tray is included uh, with six PWM fan headers, three five-volt addressable RGB headers too, and dual USB 2s pass-through. So uh, because this is ITX, it's always great to have additional USB ports that are included in the hub. Now, since the motherboard is facing up, all the IO, of course, is hidden. It's not your traditional uh, orientation. So you will have to route all those USBs and whatever display port you are connecting into the motherboard and the graphics card. And because the case can orientate both vertically and horizontally, we do have multiple cutouts behind that you can route all those uh, IO cables. And I'm guessing this is something of a bit of a compromise, but really should not be an issue. The IO is also pretty rich with four USB ports, a type C in there, and some buttons to control the case light. I have asked them about what the assembly procedure is like because the case does appear to be large 
for an ITX system, uh, while also maybe kind of a cramped work in, but they have put conscious effort to make sure that the assembly procedure is as user friendly as possible. And I do appreciate ROG taking risk on this, even though it's a super expensive tower, but ITX form factor is such a small niche in the entire computer space that I do appreciate them doing something that is very different. I hope that more companies take approach on that whole angled motherboard uh, tray, especially when it comes to ITX form factors. Really, really want to test to see if, what exactly is the benefit in terms of cooling performance, having that uh, motherboard being angled, having a little bit more uh, space behind the CPU block. And the fact that you can place the case horizontally is a nice innovative touch. We've seen that with the Evolve Shift and not many ITX enclosures go with the, the hybrid approach, but the ROG Z11 might be a pretty popular tower in the ITX space if you like the design and like ROG as a whole. This will launch at end of Q1. Let us know if you'd like us to review it. I don't think this would be very popular in the ITX space simply because the ITX case form factor has been blowing up lately with really focus on making sure that you can compact as much as possible. Whereas the ROG approach, I mean, this is a very large enclosure for an ITX form factor and there is potentially room for micro ITX, but that's not a segment that uh, is very popular. So yeah, let us know what you think of the Z11. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.